Hi everyone, my name is Shannon. Welcome to King Family Farm and welcome to my grow room. If you've been following us along for a little while, you know that we started some onions and I just wanted to show you this tray. This is the tray that is mixed. You can see here that it's got Patterson Hybrid and then starting here, it's got this um, red onion that we started and the red onions have actually started to germinate. You can just see them here. And so this is actually why I normally wouldn't start two kinds of any type of plant, even color wise. So if I'm doing snapdragons, I won't start like red snapdragons and white snapdragons in the same tray because they don't germinate at the same time. Now, these are going to be here for a very long time. Um, so it's not as big a deal, but we started these on, I think I put the seventh, but I think we actually started them on the eighth of February. It's now the 15th and they're up. So the Patterson hybrid hasn't, hasn't really germinated. I've got this other tray here. I gotta be careful cause I just watered it and I don't, oh, yep. They're just starting to germinate. There's just like one or two in there and it's really hard to see at this point. And then this here is a tray of leeks, which was started um, also on the 8th and I'm not seeing, oh, yep, they're just starting. There's a couple that have started. So we don't have these on any heat or anything. They're just um, under some light or sorry, they're not under lights, but they're on my light rack and um, that works really well for me. And then once they get going, I'll probably put them up a row and then I will put them under some light. So these are going really well for us. And so today I wanted to talk to you about how to get a plant from this stage, from the seed stage um, to a harvest stage by talking about what a plant needs to be successful. If you've grown stuff before, you probably have a good idea of what a plant needs. And uh, so maybe this is just a bit of a refresher um, or you, you think this information is not for you and I ask you to stay simply because I think in the comments that you can add information to this for other people who are new and are still learning how to grow. Um, so I'm going to go sit down and, uh, at my desk and we'll talk about what a plant needs. So when you're starting seeds, um, I think it's important to remember that a seed has everything in it it needs to get started and it simply needs the right conditions to get going. Um, and if you're a new gardener, it's important to understand that seeds want to grow. They do. It doesn't matter where they are. They don't need the absolute perfect conditions. So, you know, you can make this as basic as you want and you're still going to get results. Gardeners that have been growing for a while, um, know that if you have a compost pile, um, seeds just germinate and they grow in there with no special help from us, right? They will grow, they will produce right in a compost pile. Um, you get volunteers, you'll have tomatoes that you didn't pick everything up in the fall and that's okay. Cause I don't either. And most of the tomatoes I harvested last year that I grew, um, or that I canned up into tomato sauce were from volunteer plants that I didn't plant. So seeds want to grow. So there are things that you can do to help get from the seed stage to the final fruit stage um, that will make that plant more successful and you will be more successful. But I just, I really want you to understand if you're new to this, seeds just want to grow. And all you're doing is just boosting the environment for them to give them a better chance. So most of the information that you need about what a plant needs is actually on the back of a seed packet. Um, and so what I've done here is I've picked, this is a lettuce. Um, it's a type of romaine called freckles. It's really cute. It's, I think it's an heirloom. Yeah. And it's, I really like this one. It just looks different, but it's a romaine. And then this is a tomato, sweet million, really common cherry tomato. Lots of people grow these. Um, but these two plants, have very different desires um, for growing conditions. 
And one of the main ones is actually temperature. So the first thing we're going to talk about and what a plant needs is temperature. If you put a tomato out um, in the spring before the last frost and it gets hit with frost, it will die. It won't tolerate it. Um, if Even if your summer is really, really cool for some reason, it won't thrive as well. Tomatoes are a hot season plant. And on the back of here, it even says that the germination to germinate these is 21 to 26 degrees. These like really warm temperatures to get going and to continue growing. Whereas a lettuce, you can start this with no heat and um, they will start in the cool weather. Here I plant out lettuce in April. Um, we're zone 3B uh, in northwestern New Brunswick. And, uh, but that information is on the back of the seed packet. So temperature is really, really important. So understanding, reading your seed packet and, and understanding on the back, what temperature is optimal for your plant is extremely important. Another thing with the lettuce is you can grow this really early in the spring and then July is going to come along and it's going to bolt and it's going to get bitter because it doesn't like the heat. This likes the heat. This does not like the heat. And then you can plant this again in the fall and it will actually tolerate a few frosts. So, you know, there's temperature is, is one of those things that's really important for a seed. The next thing I made notes because I get rambly. So I'm reading from some notes I made space. And that information is also on the back of your seed packet. If you overcrowd your garden and I know when you're first starting out you want to grow all the things and you've got a four by eight box and you really need to choose the things that you really want to grow and that's why I've chosen I've got lettuce and tomatoes and probably one of the other things that you're going to want to grow is cucumbers and these two have very similar growing conditions um, but you can't grow all the things you can grow lots of things but you can't grow all the things in a four by eight box um, so I recommend picking a few items that you really want to grow, lettuce, tomato, cucumber, probably some radish, things that grow really simply and you have the space for. And those are the things that people really want to grow when they first start. So space is really important. It's also on the back of your seed packet. This particular lettuce, um, wants a seed space when you if you direct seed this it wants you to space it one centimeter apart which is like a quarter of an inch ish <coughs> sorry i have just a bit of a tickle in my throat today if you are growing this as a baby leaf and it has on the back spacing as a baby leaf you, you have different spacing than if you want to grow this as a head. Now, if you want to grow this as a full head, it says 12 inches apart, which I think is a little much. You could probably squish that a little bit. But, um, so if you start this inside and transplant, the space that this plant requires is 12 inches around from the center of the plant. So where you plant it, center 12 inches to the next one not 12 inches from the edge of the plant that that's way too much space but if you don't provide the space that these plants require one of the things that happens very commonly with tomatoes happens with cucumbers and happens with zucchini here is you get disease pressure um, because that plant doesn't have the space that it needs to grow and so the air can't circulate around that plant properly. And so you run into issues with humidity because the plant can't dry out during the day. Here we get really, really damp nights starting in August um, and it's cool. And that is just prime breeding ground for disease. So these plants need a certain amount of space and it's on the back of your seed packet. And each plant has a specific requirement for space. And it's really important that you provide the space that that plant needs. The other issue is that if you don't give enough space for things like carrots, what will happen is you'll get these really tiny, long, thin carrots. And I mean, they're kind of useless, right? Or you do tomatoes 
And what will happen is you'll get these really tall, thin, spindly plants and they're weak because they're competing for the next thing that's really important for your plant, which is light. And lighting is arguably one of the most important things when siting your garden, um, particularly for vegetables. And we're going to stick to vegetables today. I know I, I'm a commercial cut flower grower. I also grow lots of vegetables and I want to talk to people about growing vegetables because I think that's what most people really, when they start gardening, they're like, I want to grow my own food. So that's what we're going to talk about. So when you're siting your garden, it is important that that site has at least six hours of direct sunlight per day. Morning sun is best, but you know, if you've got six hours of afternoon sun, great, go with it. Eight hours is better, um, but you need at least six hours a day optimally for your plants to thrive. There are other, you know, like if you want to grow lettuce in the heat of summer, you could probably try growing it in the shade. But I mean, if you're a beginner and you're siting your garden, you want to go and sit out in your space, take yourself a cup of tea and go out there and sit and see right down when the sun hits your site and when it leaves your site. Okay. And you want to make sure that the growing season, when you're going to plant out most of your stuff, has at least six hours of daylight. <coughs> Otherwise your plants were going to get spindly. They're not going to be as disease resistant because they're just not as strong. Plants need light and they convert light with nutrients from the soil. They photosynthesize and that's how they create their food. If they don't have light, they don't photosynthesize properly and they're just not as strong a plant. So light is extremely, extremely important. So the next thing um, is water. Does your site that you are choosing um, have enough water? Can you get the garden hose to it? Because that's, that's going to be key in like July. In the spring, April, May, what you want to look for is does that site drain? And if it's not draining, you may have a soil issue, which we'll talk about, but you may just have the site is like a gully and all the water sits there. So I always recommend when you move to a new property and you're just looking to put out the garden, I highly recommend growing in containers your first year and looking at where the water pools when you, when the snow melts in the sun, in the spring, if you live in an area where the snow doesn't melt, you're going to probably this time of year, if you're in like zone seven, zone eight, you're getting into your rainy season. So you're looking at where does that water pool when you get those great big torrential downpours? Is it the site that you've chosen to grow your plants? Because if it is, you have a problem. You either have a drainage issue because you're in the gully, like I said, or you have a soil issue. You've got really heavy clay and it doesn't allow drainage really well. So you either, you're going to need to either raise your bed up or you're going to need to fix your soil, or you're going to need to do a bit of both. And that's okay, but you need to be aware of that because the thing that kills plants most often for new growers is not a lack of water, it's overwatering. So you want to make sure that your plants are getting enough water, but not too much. So when you're checking your plants, You've planted your garden. You've decided that this is the right site. The water doesn't pool in a gully. It drains nice. It's great. And you go out there with the hose and you just spray with water. The plants are wet and it's good to go. It's not. Plants, they absorb a little bit of moisture through the top of the plant, right? That from the upper. But most of the water they absorb comes up through the roots. So you really need to check your soil to make sure that your soil is moist enough. And how you check that is you want to stick your finger in, the, you can get light meters and I'll post one down below so that you can, or light meters, moisture meters. You can get a moisture meter, you need a light meter too. But for this, you want a moisture meter and you can put that in the soil if you're, you know, you like numbers and it's real technical. I am frugal and I'm not that technical. So you just take your finger and you stick it in the soil. And if you go to here, which is a little more than an inch and it is bone dry that far down in the soil, you need to water. 
And you need to water the soil, not the plants. You need to aim your hose down at the soil. Um, and one of the reasons for that is because wet foliage um, breeds disease. So, but if you stick your finger in the soil and it's kind of, you still feel moisture here, you don't need to water at that point. Um, over watering causes also shallow roots. Um, and so the root systems don't go down looking for moisture and you want to have that nice deep root system. So that's how you can make sure that you're um, not over watering. Um, we'll talk about watering your seedlings when I talk about more about seed starting. Right now we're talking about in ground, um, choosing your site and what a plant needs to grow. So the next thing that you want to concern yourself with, um, and probably more so, it kind of ties in with the water, but the big, the big thing that plants need to grow are nutrients and how do they get those nutrients? Well, you can full your feed, which is getting kind of high tech and I don't, I don't do that. Um, your soil is where these plants are going to get the nutrients using the water. They're going to pick up nutrients through the root system up into the plant and they're going to use the sunlight and photosynthesize and use those nutrients. So your soil is, arguably probably your most important thing if you're looking to grow organically inexpensively maintaining your soil building your soil is probably where it, if, if you're spending money that's where i'd spend my money building your soil so i told you i got notes so i wrote this down i did so in your soil, there's different kinds of soil. You can have silty soil, sandy soil, clay soil. We have very clay soil here, which is why this area grows a lot of potato crops. But we have clay soil that has lots of loam to it. And loam is that kind of a mix where you get the, um, the organic matter that's built in there. And the nutrients your plants need come from the amount of organic matter that's in your soil. And one of the things that's also very important about that is that the organic matter that's in your soil allows that soil to drain really well. It allows it to be loose and porous and build those nice big root systems on your plants, pardon me, that they need. Um, and so I, I soil test because I'm not adding anything to my soil at this point. Um, I'm not adding any, any, I don't lime my soil. I don't put, um, excess compost down. I don't use chicken fertilizer, manure, nothing without a soil test. Because at this point I'm just wasting resources if my soil doesn't need it. If you're just starting out, I'm not sure that a soil test is overly necessary. I have this, um... It's made by Stash. That's really good. It's um, a Meyer lemon tea, and I got some honey in it, and it is it's helping me. I'm almost over this cold, but the more I talk, the more I cough. So I'm I apologize, but here we go. I really wanted to get this information out because this is the time of year, and I know people are like, I'm gonna grow all the things. Okay, soil. So you want to um Build your soil. And the best thing I think you can do is just add compost. Compost, 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 compost. Build up your bed. Load it up with compost. Make sure if you've got really sandy soil, that compost is going to give that soil the ability to hold moisture. Because sandy soil tends to drain really easily and dry out really easily. And that's an issue. If you have heavy clay soil, which we have here, or we had, it took me about four years to really get that good soil going. Um, the compost will help break up that clay. Now, what's nice about the clay is that it holds moisture really well, but it doesn't, it, it gets really compacted really easy. So the organic matter helps break that up and, and allow the soil to, um, to drain a little bit better, but, you know, still hold moisture, but not like be soggy. So that's really important. Um, so, and, and arguably you, if you have really good soil, 
you will have really healthy plants with no fertilizers, no pesticides. It's just not necessary. Healthy plants are not attacked by disease. Nature knows when something is weak and it takes it out. If you go to your garden and you have one plant that's completely covered in bugs, that plant is weak for some reason. And it's very often, it's the nutrients in, that that plant is uptaking. And you just, I just pull those plants out. I get rid of them. Clearly that plant has an issue. If everything else around it is good, that plant has an issue. So your soil, um, I don't like using synthetic fertilizers because they're hard on the soil microbiology. Um, the microbes that are there, the the synthetic fertilizers are, um, they, they make the salt, they add salts to the soil and it sits on the, on the microbes and it kills them. And microbes are what allows for nutrients to be taken up by your plants. So if you have a really good soil, that's, you know, what's really going to help. So the other thing you can do for your soil, and I think this is one of the most important things you can do. Um, is to mulch and I mean really good heavy layer of mulch <coughs> what's going to happen with that mulch is it's going to break down over time it's going to add organic matter and those microbes are going to come up and move that down through the soil and allow for your plants to uptake nutrients that they need to survive and the basic nutrients that a plant needs is nitrogen, phosphorus, and um, potassium, NPK. Those are the three numbers that you see on a bag of fertilizer. Um, K is the, um, is the molecular symbol for the elemental symbol, sorry, for potassium. So NPK. And those are the numbers you see. And when we first discovered that that was the nutrients that plants needed, we thought that was kind of it. And so the fertilizers are based off that, the synthetic fertilizers. But what we didn't quite grasp is that the imbalances of those along with other micronutrients, because those are like your macronutrients, your micronutrients are imbalanced. And so your plant can't use the macronutrients the way that it needs to. So if you have this good quality soil, um, First of all, you probably won't need the NPK, the, the, the fertilizer that you buy from the store. If you're building your soil, um, especially when you're starting out, it's, it's really not, not necessary. So, I mean, I, I, oh, the only thing I use in my garden is compost and chicken manure because I got lots of chickens. So those are the things I use, but I don't use purchased fertilizers. I just, I don't need them at this point. So, so those are the nutrients that are required. <coughs> and if your soil is really good, then your plants can get all the micronutrients that they need and pick that up and be really, really healthy plants. So, um, those are really the things that your plants need. They need the right temperature to get started and to grow in. They need the right amount of space. Otherwise, they, they become unhealthy spindly and they compete too much for the nutrients, the light, and the other resources that they need. Um, they need to be watered, but not too much. I know this is, it's, it seems like you're not really sure about that one, but I highly recommend a moisture meter. If, if you're really not sure about it, a moisture meter will really help you out with that one. Um, they need really good quality soil and you can work on that and you will see that the more you build your soil, the less herbicides, pesticides, pardon me, and like fungicides and stuff that you will need because your plants are healthier. So, and then of course you want to choose the right site. And, um, I think that's really it for the beginning of what a plant needs. So I wanted to talk about that today before we get into seed starting so that you have the information you need to select the seeds that you want to grow this year. If your site is only a little four by eight garden box or you've only got some little planters or 
you're, you know, even if you're tilling up a quarter acre, this, you know, and I recommend not doing that your first year is way too much soil. You will be overwhelmed with weeds and you'll never garden again. Start small. Four by eight, couple four by eight boxes is all you need to get your feet wet and really get started with it. And I hope you give it a go. I hope you uh, look a little more into this information. Um, find some seeds you want to grow. And then when we start seed starting, because we're just almost there I've started onions um, and they're not something that most beginning gardeners grow from seed so they're not something that I'm I'm really gonna start with as a beginning seed grower I'm gonna do tomatoes peppers uh, cucumbers that kind of stuff that most new growers they want to grow um, so with this information you'll be able to choose your site choose your seeds decide what you want to grow um, and then we can start seeds together which I'm really excited about because we're almost there we're almost ready to get going with some seeds. So I hope you come back to start seeds with us and we'll see you here next time on the farm.